Are you listening to emo music? Are you listening to emo music? Face to face. Oh. You look like they discovered a, all their albums and they're so good. Look like a younger, scarier version of Christian Nightmare. <laughs> That's fantastic. I like the sound of it. We are alive! Damn! Make sure we're recording this thing. There we go. You! You know, recording, everything's set up. The only thing we're waiting on is who else? Yeah, no shit. I'm going to tell them they're, they're not going to get paid unless they start hopping on. <laughs> hey, we got a dozen subscribers now. Just the pip. The best playlist in the history of YouTube is taking off, my friend. We had eight subscribers. Now we have 12 subscribers. This happened Just overnight. Overnight. We are moving to the top of the charts, baby. Thanks to AEW. Yeah, man. Just the pit where you can find just the picture in picture from AEW Dynamite, AEW Rampage, and AEW Collision. If I can stay up late enough to watch it. Yeah. You guys are not going to get paid if you guys keep showing up late for work. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah, but fucking both better hop on. I've been freaking, been like a drug addict watching all the shit fucking on Why? the Vikings grass. Why are you consuming all this garbage that, that no one's going to be right in the end? Uh, I know. Yeah, it's everybody's just talking out their ass like they know what they're talking about. This is why I hate that part of the show. Like you guys hijack the show to talk about shit. No one knows what they're talking about on, and yet we, uh, you guys, seem to think that you know better than people who don't know. No, we're trying to figure it out, Tony. That's no. what we're doing. Oh, this I is like through the discussion, like, we're learning. Yeah. We're learning. We're learn it's like going to church, except we can talk back and forth. I see. It's not just God talking to us. Yes. Sometimes oh, I would, God would talk to us and just say, select, break me. <laughs> I would hope if there is a God, he's that's not what he's telling us to do. Like that would be and, a really end the war in Gaza. <laughs> that would be a really fucking horrible God if he's focused on just yet yeah, let's worry about the NFL draft. Everybody the, the else Vikings is winning a Super Bowl. It's all he wants. It's, it's his one big thing is like, God dang, you know, if just, if God, if my dad could just, if Jesus is just like, God, dad, if you could just let the Vikings win, what? Just what is all I ask? It's the only thing that bothers him about the world. <laughs> this crucifixion doesn't even bother him anymore. It's just this, <laughs> this, this long drought of Vikings fucking failures. <laughs> I'll get to fix, fixing the fucking other misery in the world. I got to focus on this NFL team the, first. The upcoming drought that's going to make millions starve. Yeah, no, just give the Vikings a fucking Super Bowl and all will be right in the in the world. <sighs> oh, Christ. That's why, that's, hey, you, you know, I forgot how nice it was to have a team like Duke men's basketball to follow at this time in the year when, like, baseball just doesn't, Take, it just lets it you down. Yeah, to let you down, or you just—it's lost my interest now. Like it's just too slow a game. There's not enough hits, not enough base runners. It's just not exciting enough. Um, and now I have it again. I have it again. Of course. All right. So the Duke softball. My God, pal, they rocket to the top of softball America's rankings. I yeah. declare my fandom, and I and I have declared my fandom before that ever happened, but. I went on Instagram to make a point that I, hey, I, 
I declared my fandom before they were number one. I'm not hopping on a bandwagon. And then they go and lose to fucking Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's still top three in the country. Uh, ESPN.com uh, and I think USA rankings have them as number three. I think they got like five or six coaches poll uh, poll votes, and uh, or that would be media member votes. They're fucking good, man. They've got three mm -hmm. terrific players on that team. Claire Davidson is a senior who's fantastic. Uh, for sure, numbers are insane. She struck out 13 times in 102 ABs. There, Mike, 13 That's times in 102 ABs. <laughs> that's insane that's <laughs> just insane that's how many strikeouts the twins get in one game <laughs> you're right yes she's played 38 games uh, uh, no they've been good for a while I remember watching them last year in the tournament yeah we, com we commented on the uniforms last year oh my god they've got the hottest uniforms in the game every year they look the best on the field and I'm not not going to go as far as you are saying softball is a better sport, but hey, here's somebody who might say that softball is a better sport. No, college world, it's way fucking better. College Tell softball why, is better than college baseball. I will go that far. I just told him that Claire Davidson of Duke, uh, the Duke senior, has 13 strikeouts and 102 ABs. That's why I like it. You got girls hitting 451 in the league. You know, it's insane. There's always somebody on base. The bases are so damn close together. The fucking, it take, you can't hold on to the ball for more than a second and a half or more than a, a second and get the out at first. It's just not happening. If you fucking double clutch, they're safe. Everyone's safe. It's Brad, amazing. It's tell amazing us how much like better softball is. Grown women. Set up for offense. Play, grown is. women play on the same exact field as they do when they're six years old. Yeah. The same fucking field. He's, right. It's no, amazing. Exact... I mean, no, to that... think that you're 60 feet away from, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not shaming anything, but a six foot one, 240 pound woman up there that can hit the ball, probably coming off her bat over a hundred miles an hour and you make the play, but then you have, Less than a second to get rid of it. Yeah. To get the out. Yeah. Because all I mean, of them it's like, run. All it, of them it's amazing. Run. You, I mean, we see we see a hard hit ball to the shortstop in the major leagues, and you've got five seconds to get rid of the ball. You it's can double clutch twice and get the out at first. It's no, it's it's a fast paced game. It's quick. Um, I don't know, and it's something about like the emotion that the women show, the the chanting and the yeah. dugouts. That it's just the it's a funner thing. Big. Yeah, especially and, in these SEC schools where they've won championships in the past and they've won all the, they've gotten all that money to build great facilities like LSU, Georgia, the Gators. They all have just great environments. All the games are sold out. It's just fantastic to watch this great well, television product. Hey, and local, local, we have a top tier. Uh, Juco College softball program. Right. I mean, it's, it's, you get to watch it in your own backyard. It is, yep. I don't know. I mean, also having two girls that play softball, it's, it's going to get my heart a little bit, but it's funner to watch. I would rather watch, I watch that sit shit all day long at work. Yeah. I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> ESPN Plus. I watch. It's okay, Duke Brad. Blue I don't Devils. think they're one of our dozen subscribers. We've got a <laughs> dozen, baby. Hey, uh, no, Mike how, climbing up the charts, man. How good do those uniforms look? Those pinstripe Duke uniforms the other day. I don't oh think my yeah. God. Those are the best ones. Do you know like, this shirt is like 25 years old? It's still one of my favorites. My see, and here I can explain my Duke fandom. It's got a, a start. I don't know what your Duke fandom stems from, other than they were great when you were, yeah, you know, yeah. impressionable, impressionable boys. Because they're uh, white kids from the suburbs. That's why you're Duke fans. I mean, don't get over fucking well, drawn on this. No, shit. it's not. It is. Mine is. Mine's more in depth than that. See, I wouldn't know what Duke University was if not for my aunt, who was a dispatcher for uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And she hated that job. So she became a Duke men's basketball fan and started sending me things like this to get me on the bandwagon, which was, you know, easy because they were terrific back then. But I, as, haven't, as watched, it, I haven't watched a Duke men's basketball game since Zion Williamson went to the yeah, pros. But that's the that's the that's the problem. You're just you're a fair weather fan when it comes I am to not. I, I just discovered <laughs> I just discovered the replacement for the twins being such bad baseball. Mike, you've got your hand raised. Go ahead. 
I was I'm trying to do this more polite instead of just interjecting all the time. That's very nice. Of you. <laughs> well, that's I mean I'm a baseball fan. It's a more polite game. So no, I think if everybody's honest who's actually like we are, and I'm not really I'm not a Duke fan anymore. It's just like everybody who hopped on Iowa's bandwagon. It's no, there's no. these race wars in sports. White people like Duke because you got Christian Leitner and these other well, Grant Hill, God, he's white too. Um, <laughs> but but I mean it's that's exactly it. Anybody who's watching Iowa cheering for them, they like them because there's a stud white girl who's just fucking kicking ass. That's the reality. I mean relatable. I mean, I don't know. It's something that I God, well, how did we get into the brace talk so soon? We've only been on completely, you wrong, wrong, you completely wrong. Completely wrong, though. It, it, it is. As, as a little kid, yes, I, it was kind of amazing that there is this team that has a bunch of white people which go out and kick some ass. My thing was, as a basketball player, how amazing would it be to play in Cameron Indoor Stadium? Oh, my God. That was the best the environment. The most intimate sport. place. At, like it, you can't beat it. Um, nope. That was probably the thing that most overwhelmed me. Uh, that and uh, oh, Wojo slapping the floor. Like, that was yeah. – I, I loved that immediately. Like, this guy gets after it on the defensive end. That's the type of basketball I really enjoyed. And so, and grow, and that's growing a up lie, the, though. It, but a gr- most up, intimate, I slapped the floor for no. freshman year of high school. Like most intimate stadium you could play in is Washington oh. Middle School lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> the cafeteria? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Go, go Just, ahead. Back the sideline, a chair, can, and you've got to like find it, you know, get your and a brick the wall. Of the chair, yeah. <laughs> Where the tables come down out of it. Yeah. How could you say though that Caitlin Clark is overrated, overhyped? Said I'm not that. saying I did not say that. Nobody said that. I'm that saying... everybody jumped on her bandwagon. How can you not? She's a oh female. well. There's a lot of people. I'm saying. I'm saying women's that... basketball this yeah. last week, and I mean with, that's, that's that can be numerically and quantitatively uh, proven. Oh yeah, totally. By the numbers. How, I mean, how awesome is it that the most watched so... basketball game on ESPN is women's college basketball? Yep. Beautiful, I, freaking amazing. I think that's awesome. I'm just saying part of it is obvious. Race comes into this. Part of it's because she's white. There's plenty no. of yeah. well, <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's a majority true. white country, it's Brad. True. Yes. Midwestern America gets behind their heroes that happen to look like them. It's just the way who was the who was the hero when we were growing up? Michael Herbie Jordan. Puckett. Yeah, Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan was easy one for everybody, though. He was what the most marketed he? athlete in the world. Like it would have been impossible. It, it, that that's kind of like OJ Simpson when he OJ said rest in peace OJ. rest in peace but OJ OJ took, was oh, the I've first one to it do all that. Day. and you know he kind of transcends transcended race and becoming so popular that it, you know regardless of color you loved him he was incredible to watch and then he went to uh the silver screen to boot and became even more popular in different realms uh yeah but i mean some some of people can transcend that, and I I think Caitlin Clark is one of them. She, I mean, we're gonna find out right quick because thirty six of her forty games next year are gonna be nationally broadcasted, which is absolutely insane. Considering the fact that the Indiana Fever are still calling me to try and sell me season tickets, which is shocking. How is that place not sold out? Fucking shocking. Yeah. Anyways, we're live on YouTube. At Minnesota Foul Play by Play, it's where you can find just the pip, our latest playlist where I do the painstaking work of recording the picture in picture for you from AEW shows. Usually, I uh, put them out about a week after, uh, as to not have any spoilers. Although I, there's only one match I know of that's ever ended in the picture in picture. Uh, Orange Cassidy won it. That was just shocking. Um, but you certainly don't want to miss it. And this is for people like me who stream instead of uh, have cable or a DVR. Um, those of us without DVRs don't get the picture in picture if we don't watch live. So this is for all of you out there. The four people who added us on YouTube, thank you. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the show thus far. We're going to get started with the podcast version of the show in a second. Uh, we're going to talk Timberwolves 
playoffs previews. I wish I was hoping Joel would be able to make it my favorite cousin and NBA 2K expert, uh, but he is predisposed. Um, we will talk probably way too much Vikings, especially when Tyler shows up. <laughs> yeah, God damn it. And that'll be the moment where I go to refill my drink and get too drunk to ever like, want to cut the show together and do all this work for an hour and then wake up at 5.55 a.m. to go to the golf course and mow the back nine. Fucking golf course is coming together nicely, boys. How's the weather out in Montana? Western part of the state is nice. <sighs> it finally got nice. Like 70 degrees today. So what's the ETA on the golf course opening in Glendive? <laughs> oh, it's open. It was, it's it's open. open for like a week and a half, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we're we're doing walking only on uh tomorrow morning. 47, 47 on my first nine. The greens are open. Good. Yeah, it's all open. God, I should have never left fucking Glen Dive. For carts shout out, too. For carts. Shout out to Katie Peterson, you know, running that golf course the way she does. It's it it's it's a great place. Katie's a sweetheart. Katie sold me the, the cheapest drink I've ever received in my life. It was a it was a highball glass of uh wild turkey on ice. That was filled damn near the top for three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Mike paid for it. <laughs> throw up. <laughs> it was good. Oh. No, that's the one sport I never thought I'd get into, and I fucking fell in love with it last year. Uh, I gotta hit the driving range tomorrow. It's starting to dry up out here. It's all off carpet, though, is the problem. I'd like to hit off grass if I could. Yeah, anyway, so since this is dead time, let's talk uh, about the twins. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I mean, a softball field's a lot smaller than a baseball field, so the action's gonna be a lot quicker. Brad, I think, already mentioned what is it? Softball's what 60 feet to the bag, yeah, baseball's 90. Obviously, the out 46 feet pitcher's mound to catcher <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, we so, got I mean, girls. So throwing the equivalent of like 110 mile an hour fastballs. And I mean, generally most baseball stadiums, it's about 400 feet to dead center, if not more. Right. Softballs, I think like 250. No, so it's 200, 200 on average. They get up to like 220, but nothing over that. Yeah, I think I just read an article on the lines. They have to be 190 feet down, which in baseball, most of them are 330 plus. Unless they're stupid stadiums like the Red Sox, Fenway or New York, <laughs> um, Cincinnati. But yeah, it is. I don't. They're two totally different games, born out of the same idea. I mean, but I think they're both equally as awesome. Softball is just way more intense because everything moves so fucking fast. And why Tony probably likes it? All the slap hits, all the bunts. I mean, love it, it. love it. The hit and runs. Brad, what's the what's the uh, rules regarding uh, pinch runners uh, at your level, at least? Uh, you can have courtesy runners. For everybody? For the most part, yeah. Wow, that's nuts. What do you think about that? I don't know if well, I Because you, like, you have, like, designated players that um, will just play defense, and then you'll have somebody that hits for them. Um, that's I, I mean, it's... more players get into the game, I guess. Yeah, that, yeah. You know? You're producing the best product, then. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're right about that. Jesus Christ, superstar! No, I didn't. I didn't realize you could do that. Hey, yeah, do you know what's going to get us going right now? What's that? What's up, brother? You guys must not know that, huh? That's no. what. Look at a sketch have, on TikTok. We don't have kids, and we don't. Yeah. Part I watch him. This this kid just blew up. He plays Madden. I just had to uh, streams it. I did. I literally had to download the TikTok app today just so I could watch that OJ Simpson meme you sent, which wasn't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had a TikTok account. I deleted it all. Like, there's no point for me to it's have gonna, it. It's also going to be banned soon, anyways. It's already banned in Montana. Yeah. <laughs> So can you download it again then? I just did it today. Oh, so it's not banned in Montana then? I got to blow my nose before we get started. Or I'm going to get fucking arrested for having TikTok <laughs> on my phone. Which, fuck them. Oh, 
Okay, so I can close that softball thing. Oh. All that booger sugar just clogging up the pipes there. So their boxes must be bigger than baseball, huh? Their batting boxes? No, they're the same. Because with that, you have to stay in the box when the bat makes contact with the ball, right? Right. Yeah. That's Both tough. feet are just one foot. You cannot step outside of the box when you make contact. It's just like baseball rules. Okay. So, yeah, you can have, if you're in, typically left handers do it. So, as Step long as that run. right foot does not plant, I mean, right. Shoot, you can be four feet closer to the pitcher. I mean, it's it, it's it's just a, it's amazing. It's intense. No, it is a fucking sweet game. All right. Well, let's Speaking of that, let's get this shit rolling. I, I I might have to leave to go pick up Ava from softball. Okay. Hello. Welcome to this thing we call Minnesota Foul Play by Play. I'm your host, Anthony Variano, and I'm joined currently by the brothers Haas, Michael and Bradley. Michael, what's bringing your great mood to this evening's live show on Minnesota Foul Play by Play YouTube channel? Life. <laughs> Oh, is, this, is he is he still there? Did he freeze? <laughs> like, oh I don't know. I've got you got nothing. I got nothing. It was a fun, finally a fun Twins game yesterday, but another postponement today. Which, yeah. How I don't are know. you not watching the fucking Masters right now? Because it's not. It's just opening around. Nobody cares until the weekend. I'm not going to watch unless Tiger makes the cut, which he won't. He won't. He, he might not even finish right now. He might not even finish around. His back is shooting, his back is worse than mine. He should yeah. do under he's, right he's now. literally had more discs fused to his back <laughs> that than I have. That doesn't matter, right? Brad's actually watching it though, so I'm going to bring it up right here. All right. Yeah, well, might as well. We're, we're live on YouTube. Brad, what's bringing your good mood to the uh, table today? I've never been more excited for an NFL draft than I am. I mean, yeah, it's, like, I, it's more it's, excited I, for an NFL draft. Like this, honestly, like I'm kind of jealous. Are you going to the draft party? The draft party? No, yeah. I'll be in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. I'll be, never mind, we'll be man. coming to you live from the Circa Sports. I was going to say, like, if, if there was ever a time to be at U.S. Bank US Stadium Vegas. for the draft party, like it'd be this year. Like. I, I feel like we're either going to feel like we won the Super Bowl in April or we lost it. Like, I mean, I, I've i never been this into a draft my entire yeah. life. Like it's but Mike said I'm the jacked. same thing. He's consumed podcasts that he never thought he would consume because he's, the, the, the Vikings are going to draft a quarterback. We think. We think they are. We still don't have any actual evidence of that being the case, but – I, mean, I guess we could start getting into that. I mean, right. I know it's well, going to no. hijack the show, and I'd like just, to have Tyler here to talk let's about Let's wait a little bit on that and see if Tyler hops on. Yeah. Just because there's a lot like, to be talk said. About, talk about how bad the Twins are at hitting baseballs, could you? Like, their bats are dead. Did I just find they, – they played 12 games before they got their first hit with runners in scoring position? Is that what I heard? No, they haven't even played 12 games. They played 10 games so far. It was – Nine games yeah. until they got their 39 at bats. It's 30, <laughs> no, it was 33. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's 33 opportunities where somebody came up to the plate and they had a guy on second or third base <laughs> and they couldn't bring him across until Byron Buxton oh did finally God. yesterday. That is so pathetic. But I mean, yesterday's, yesterday's game finally was kind of like a sigh of relief because I am not going to lie. This start to the season, their offense is horrendous. We're at the bottom. We're at the bottom of everything. Royce Lewis exploded, and then something exploded in his leg, and yeah. then the three innings of good baseball. The entire and then lineup just, exploded yeah. as a result. <laughs> it's incredible. I can't. It, just to show you, like, it's it's like just pathetic. 
10 games played. We're already up to 105 strikeouts, so we're averaging, averaging 10.5 strikeouts a game. Which is about which, what they averaged last year, I believe. And I can understand there is some logic to be said that a strikeout is just an out. It's the same thing as grounding out to second or short or third. But Jesus Christ, they're boring games to watch. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about why softball is fun to watch? At least they're putting the ball in play. Yeah, Fuck, they're There's twins. Mean. I understand Glass now is probably – a top three, top five pitcher in the league, and he shut us down. But for fuck's sake, when it's game after game and you're like, oh, great, we got five hits or four hits, <laughs> it like, it's pathetic. Our team batting average right now is a buck 84. Not bad. Fucking slugging percentage, 325. OPS, I guess there's, there's a couple teams worse than us, the Mariners and the Marlins. But I mean... We're doing worse than the Oakland Athletics. Like, what the fuck? Wow. We did <laughs> average over 10 strikeouts per game. 1,654 total last year. And you know how Minnesota fans, I wish more Minnesota fans were like, it brought your guys' negativity. Because I just get sick of some of these games, you hop onto these forums, and it's just like, if you want to be negative, go root for a different team, where I'm just yeah. like, what positives are you bringing out of the game? Yeah. Like, I get it. Buxton had a sweet fucking catch in center field. And he got up from it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> oh, God. When he, was, when he made the catch, and looking at his wrist, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, it's going to snap his wrist off. <laughs> but, like, no, I just – there's just so much of this bullshit, like, where you can never criticize the twins. Fucking Falvey is God. The owners are fucking gods. It, like, Rocco never makes a mistake where it's just like, I understand – this is the same approach we had last year, and I guess, yeah, we did win the division. And Julian, I don't know, Julian made me shut up because he fucking hit two home runs yesterday, but, like, watching him where I'm like, fucking get the bat off your shoulder, you motherfucker. Like, it's like... <laughs> well, the, still, the sad thing still, is, is the Twins are still odds-on favorite to win the Central. Yeah, and they're they're still probably just shaking off spring training. Like, they're, it takes a month to get into the season and be right. Um, it was right. Bullshit. 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 Not for the Guardians. Not Guardians. for the fucking Yankees. Guardians. I mean, like, come on. No, I'm saying Guardians base. I've watched just as many Cleveland games as they had Twins games. Their fucking games are fun to watch. They're a small They're ball team. They're playing a different style. Yeah. yeah. It's easier to play that when, you know, we're playing. This The style the Twins are playing is, is too precise to expect to be great right out of the, the box. Like, it's this just all or nothing baseball is, requires perfect placement of the bat, no. perfect bat speed. It's recognition of pitches. It's it takes a long time to to get that to work right. And I think it's a good approach for a regular season and a terrible approach for a postseason. Oh, and yeah. I've said that. But ever since they started doing it in 2019, set the record for home That's runs and it's not going to win them nothing. But they got Pablo Lopez now, who's the best chance they have for winning anything in the postseason. No, but my I thing think. is, you have to, you can't change a format from the season to the postseason. And no. what sport can you fucking work on something a whole fucking season, then flip it up in the post? Like it just doesn't work that way. And I just, they need to start making in-game adjustments. I watched Trevor Plouffe. He said it perfect. He's like, it's not a bad approach. Like people like Julian are having. Like he sees. He sees the strike zone better than the umps do. Yeah. However, the beauty of the game is learning what this ump is going to call a strike, and then it's on you to protect that zone, whatever that zone out of the ump's eyes looks like. So, Which this is why I'm so excited for the digitization of the strike zone so we don't have to do this anymore. Like, hitting is so goddamn I'm... hard already. Never – there's no, it's the only sport in the world where the rules change from day to day. Is softball and baseball in I think terms of the strike zone? No, I think there's a debate to be had whether or not that's going to make the game better or not. It if you look, will. no, it if you will. look at the, no, if you look at the Twins, they're the kind of team who's playing a kind of baseball, imagining that that strike zone's already there, and you want to know what it is. It's fucking boring to watch. I want to see tweet teams swinging, fucking trying to put the ball in play, other than oh, that was a sliver outside. I got you, good pitcher. <laughs> like it's just fucking boring. Yeah. I that's mean, my tirade. That's why I'm watching college softball, baby. It's my fucking tirade, and I will 
Tune in and watch the Twins take on the Tigers you guys, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. You guys want to know? Uh, uh, okay, so I was at the brewery for happy hour during the uh, first game of the Dodgers and Twins series. I was like, eh, you know, it's the Dodgers. I, I wouldn't mind seeing the Dodgers play the Twins. I'll go to the brewery. It's, you know, dollar off beers. And so they put it on the big screen for me. And I got to be honest, like, the only times I actually looked up to watch that game was when the first three hitters for the Dodgers were up. <laughs> that's a good, that's a fun lineup. Uh, and when Byron Buxton was up and I watched a game. I had no, no rooting interest in no betting interest in more than that. And it was LSU, Florida college of softball yeah. was demanding LSU. my attention, demanding LSU. it. LSU softball is always good, though. Yeah. Um, Gators came back five from five one deficit in that game and uh, won it in the eighth and extra in one an extra inning. Terrific. No, game. no, and we can move on from Twins talk um, because it looks like Brad's. There's not much to talk about. Shoot himself in the head. I <laughs> no, but I mean the, the one the one positive I look at the start of the season, especially looking at that Dodgers series is where Byron Buxton's not hurt. That's a yeah. positive. So Pit, far, that's pitching the best thing. as. I'm saying pitching as well. I was surprised that we could hold what I would argue the best offense in baseball. We could contain it, them a bit. It's not just the first three guys in that oh, lineup. God, it's damn. like the first six guys in that lineup are terrifying. Absolutely yeah. terrifying. And yeah, I was really impressed with, uh, was it Louis Varland who pitched one of those games? Uh, and he it's, was terrific. It's just depressing. Like, cause he would get no run support, but the last, the third game of that series where we finally took one of the three, there was some, I mean, that's, I can understand you find baseball boring, but that was like the perfect kind of a game where there's a fucking high, then you go through a lull and then another high. Yeah. It was climactic at the end too. And uh, then Dodgers almost won that game. Uh, the throw Jacks throwing, at the door there. Throwing. Uh, no, it, Jacks turned it over to uh, Oak Oakert. Oh, Kurt. Oh, yeah. They've been using him a lot, and I don't know how I feel about him. Well, we'd have injury concerns, but that greatest relay I've fucking have probably seen in Twins history, going from Kirilov to Frickin, C4 to Vasquez. C4 is playing amazing. Is that what we're Correa. calling Carlos Correa now, as C4? Really? That's what his nickname has been. But, uh, okay, Correa. Correa is playing fantastic. His defense this year has been fucking amazing. He's fully healthy. Yeah, he's he, not usually a, a strong starter out of the gate from spring training either, and this year he has been. He gunned out fucking Shohei Otani trying to go from first to home. I think he was, God, just short, short right center. He went out that far. He's got he an incredible fucking, arm, man. I think they clocked it. It came in like a, off of his arm, like 95 miles an hour to the plate, just on the fucking Yo, rope. And a boy. And of course, the ump fucking called him safe because he had the perfect view of seeing the glove. <laughs> some, of, some of these umps are just so fucking dumb. But anyway. <laughs> and ex another reason why I'd like the, the strike zone to be digitized and for someone to just be telling them, hey, that was a strike. You can call that one a strike. Just press a button, send them a fucking message to, you know, a little buzzer on their goddamn belt clip. And this game would be better because there would be more balls put in play. There'd be more action and more, uh, more runners on the base paths. Um, and guys would go up to the zone with an, eye, with an exact idea of what they can expect the strike zone to be. I think, and there's just too many times where, I mean, I How think baseball not? umpires, home plate umpires, are the best officials in sports, which is Finally, the funny thing. Well, no, they get more right than anybody else. Oh, yeah. But how would it not, going to an electric one, be better for everything? The pitchers know Why? that they have to pitch a strike. Yeah. Or their pitches have to be good enough to get a guy to swing out of the zone. Greg so Maddox the, wouldn't exist in that in this era of baseball you you couldn't get away with that shit fair enough i mean i just i don't know i'm I just, just i'm stitch framing would become a thing of the past as a catcher your yeah. value comes from hitting a fucking baseball holy cow that would be I, great if like the the catchers on teams could actually hit baseballs most of them can't hit for shit and they certainly can't run i just i don't something's gonna happen 
it's going to drastically change the game, and that's the thing. Are you going to have an asterisk then and going forward where this is no, where we we've start? got a live ball area, there's a dead ball area, and there's a, a an electric area. Ooh, how do we I like just, that? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Here's a, here's a perfect example. Tennis used to be a judgment yeah. call on if it was in or out. It still they is went, on a lot of ATP and WTA uh, warm up, you know, uh, events, uh, WTA and ATP 1000 events. You're into a lot more tennis than we are, but is it not a better game if it, the ball's actually in or it's out? It's fantastic. It's fantastic. So why not do that with the strike zone? Why is it? Why is it baseball is the only sport that will not do that? You can go to replay on other shit, but when it comes down to that judgment call. That'll be well, the first be. thing that falls, Brad, is what they're doing at AAA right now and where a hitter can challenge a third pitch strike and can be overturned in a matter of seconds. Like, it happens so fast you don't even notice it. Uh, no, that'll, be the, that'll be the first thing they do. They won't go completely to no. the digital strike zone right away. I just – my thing is part of – and maybe you guys disagree. I think part of the beauty of baseball, it is – it's a – Chess game with multiple chess games going on. Inside you gotta have of pieces it. on the board, though. It's Im it's important to have pieces. That on is, the board. I'm saying that is on the board. That is a fucking game, though. You learn your fucking umpire. If he's calling it three inches outside, I'm sorry. That's on you as the offensive team oh, to make adjustments. Usually, I would be totally with you, but I don't. I haven't seen anything from hitters in that entire league besides Luis Arias, who have said, "Hey." uh, I'm going to take this into my own hands and swing like Tony Gwynn. And they, that's what they would have to do because it's everybody's throwing so goddamn hard or they'd have to lower the mound, which I've been a proponent for, for years. This show was number one behind that and is still going to be atop that hill, which should be a little bit shorter just because no, but that's coming at a too hot an angle. It's too difficult. Just too goddamn difficult. I just think we're starting to in baseball. The evolution of baseball is so slow, which I'm happy with, because I think we started looking at some of these new rule changes, and they're starting to have effects on the game that we probably should have foreseen but didn't. Like, I, I, they were talking about arm injuries for pitchers. Yeah. Of course, you fucking Levitard always says, it, like, you're not supposed to throw that hard. Whatever. No kidding. One of the one of the biggest things I took those, yeah, if you can't use any sticky shit on your fingers. You are going to use more torque. Overcompensate elsewhere. And yeah. overcompensate. And that's something we should be should have thought about. Well, maybe we should allow some sticky shit because. You well, just, they did. It hasn't been outlawed entirely. Off. There's still substances you can use. There are legal substances. Whatever. I'm just saying. That's a good combination of rosin and sweat. Uh, but yeah, the, the that other stuff, though, was incredible you were looking at spin rates that were just impossible to read pitches out of the hand uh that's that's not good for the game either though i don't know there's a lot wrong with the game still we can agree on that uh enough so that i i'm a more of a college softball fan than i am a major league baseball fan now yeah um, and that next month it'll change to something else no it won't i think <laughs> the next month's gonna be the heart of yeah the the softball watching uh yeah once they get into tournament season yeah, yeah, oh baby. boy oh boy it's gonna be fun all right brad it's time this is your segment my friend let's start talking some vikings draft man oh god oh god oh, what everybody god. wants to hear what everybody wants what's to the hey, hey, pause, wants to know. pause for, pause for <laughs> one second we're live brad um, there, there's no pause no no what <laughs> i just hit it pause no, i'm gonna get off I'm gonna get on my phone, and I'm gonna go get Ava from practice. I'll oh, so we it. can we can talk what? Uh, we can talk something else until he gets back. I saw the Cookie can, Man movie. That what I'm saying is, I can I can keep going, or let me know. Just yeah. text me. Text me when Tyler gets on, because I think we should wait for okay. Tyler. We'll Maybe do. see what yeah. his. Yeah, Tyler's got great right. information. We are hoping that Tyler J. Culver would join us to talk uh, Vikings, uh, so well, what, we can push this could, off. Yeah, what we could do also is, I mean, the doesn't have to be like one of our full shows. It could be two, like a condensed two condensed ones. It's all going to end up one show in the end. No, I know that's what. I, well, yeah, I'm trying to get into producing and stuff, and I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just on air talent, so I got to stick in yeah, my lane. That's what you are, yes. <laughs> 
We can talk some wrestling. You want to talk some wrestling, Mike? Oh, I'd rather. Dude. <laughs> how good was WrestleMania this last weekend? I wouldn't know. I don't watch WWE. It was fucking Really was it good? I it saw was... Nas Reed's uh beach towel made an appearance. That Bro, was it was <laughs> like it was it was good, man. It was it, it, What it was, was it on? Where'd you watch it at? Pay-per-view. How much was it? Like who knows? 50 bucks. So it's, it's, it's a fucking right. it's a two day event, man. Oh, there might be sixty or so sixty nine. No, it was good. It was I was I was impressed. You know, it's the older generation everybody. is starting to die off, and now new guy like it's. I, I heard everybody came back though, like the Rock. Yeah, Seattle it was, was there. Crazy. Like, fuck yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back in a bit. Okay. Oh, and then there's just Mike and Tony and again. Two. Just wandering around the streets of Minneapolis, looking uh, for our next Twins game. <laughs> trying to catch a cab that never came. Trying on to get Lake off Street. Of, get walk off all the way. To, never walk all the way to St. Paul. Oh, thank God we had the fuel. That fucking goddamn bus trip was my favorite night. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> How did we? We must have been so goddamn hammered to not notice. <laughs> Look it is. I did not notice that the fucking big buildings were being left behind us. Like, What's my head? Look around. And, oh, there's no more big buildings. Where did those big buildings go? What's my fucking head hit the window? I just passed out. And I remember waking up. I'm like, we aren't. There's no fucking goddamn buildings. <laughs> Where did the skyscrapers go? Oh, God. I was so fucking hammered. What, was, what were we doing that night? Were we at a show? Or was it a baseball game or both? I think it could have been both. Yeah, I think it was both. I can't. We got so fucked up that that was we pushed it hard that day. When didn't we push it <laughs> hard? Like, we came up with a thing called partying like the elderly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like we had nothing to lose because we could be dead tomorrow. Party like you're already dead. <laughs> oh my god! Is. Right when Brand leaves, Cole. Yeah. Hey, hello. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to this live edition yeah. of Minnesota Foul Play by Play. I am now joined by our favorite guest co-host, Mister Tyler Jacober. Hi, my eyes. Hi, Tyler. Brad left. Where'd he go? What's he doing? What's going He's on? Picking up his daughter. Oh, okay. I guess being super dad slash super coach. We've no, been talking yeah, so about uh, why fast pitch softball is better than baseball. Your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> what age are we talking about? 12 year olds? Because well, yeah. I've been watching a lot of SEC softball on ESPN, uh, ESPN Plus. Uh, I watched, I, I told these guys that while the Dodgers were playing the Twins in game one, I was, my attention was consumed by uh, the Florida Gators taking on LSU. And coming back from a five-one deficit to win no. an eight, it was a horrific it is, game. It's it is fun to watch. There's a lot of glass ceilings being broke at the moment. So, oh, you no, nah, no kidding. Uh, it's yeah, it's good. Indiana Fever games, thirty-six of forty of them going to be on national television. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty great. That's great for the league. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. So I want to discuss this and, and why everybody seems to think that the college uh, women's college basketball is going to continue just exponentially increasing in viewership. Again, but, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of this is as a result of bad WNBA policy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got Juju Watkins, who is pro ready, a, a freshman at USC who's pro ready, who cannot come out, uh, declare for the draft until her age 22 season. And wow. this is exact yes, and this is exactly why women's college basketball has been able to build stars like Caitlin Clark <clears throat> and Angel Reese, um, because they have these players for three at least three years, whereas in the men's league for ever it seems, uh, they've been able to declare for the draft after one year generally in college, was... um, and I, I feel like that rule is going to be changed uh, in the next collective bargaining agreement they will they'll probably lower it to 20 years old um so players are required They're to play smart. in two years make any money it might be good for them really because they get to see them in their pre-pro days which a lot of people prefer anyway and then if you feel like you're in on it at the front end so 
Oh God, Brad's Brad's joining live from the vehicle while he's driving to pick up his daughter. He found out Tyler was on the broadcast. He can't help himself. He's got a truck fight. He's trapped. Like, oh Here we go. He's gonna he's go back Brad. Brad, give us your Vikings draft takes while you're driving and see if we can get you pulled over, baby. God, that'd be great for the show. You're muted, buddy. Your audio's not working. About, uh, not pay attention to the road. He went, yeah, he went up to the mic to make the pick in the audience can here. Yeah, you lost Terrell Suggs, man. You don't get him. <laughs> All right, Tyler. Well, you give Brad some of your stuff then because he can hear us, I assume. Me? What if, yeah, what have you heard? I want your uh, – you got the best Vikings information out of all of us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I've been watching YouTube videos about, like they're going out of fucking style, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike said he, he downloaded TikTok to watch – oh, no, that was the OJ, t- uh, OJ TikTok. Yeah. That he said, yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, OJ. <laughs> Tyler, who are we taking? What are we doing? Is it Cardinals? We're going to trade with the Cardinals for that pick, right? No. I hope not because they're going to ask a lot no. more than the Patriots. But – it's apparent it's going to be a quarterback unless they're playing the long con here because they're. I'm sure you've That's talked wow. about it already. No, we haven't talked no. any football. We waited until you got here. Yeah. You are bringing up something I wanted. I didn't think anybody else would bring it up. What's that? Like, <clears throat> like I was wondering, and everybody is saying we're going to take a QB, and we probably should. Yeah. But there are some cons. There's a lot of fucking good talent in this draft where – we can make a sneak attack that wouldn't maybe cost us a first round pick next year. Take like a Malik Neighbors or a Joe Alt, like just one of these fucking awesome players. If they just keep taking like, quarterbacks, 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 and these guys drop, I mean, but they're not they're not scared to deal. Like this is not a scared organization right now. They're not when it comes to the draft, and not no. it never seems like like I mean, I know they've failed to make a pick twice and no team's ever done it once. But... About this <laughs> <laughs> that might not happen again. Who yeah, knows? let's hope so. <laughs> so then so then Culver, in your dream scenario, yeah, what do you want to see happen with the Vikes and make it realistic? I get so sick of I yeah, seeing mock drafts where it's just like, oh yeah, Vikes are gonna move up to three. And they only had to give up this, where it's like, Mike, oh, I can't let it go anymore. Why does it sound like you uh, have a cigarette lodged into your throat? Like, that's what your voice sounds like right now. Because I'm, I'm kind of sick. That's oh, the shit. From the cigarettes, yeah. But He's playing hurt. He's playing hurt, folks. <laughs> playing hurt. What a guy. Um, Realistically, yeah. It's, the quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three. Four in the top five, maybe. But there's this isn't the first time that that's been said, and it and and you know ESPN and and journalists they they love to make their mocks and do this and say this is going to happen. P- organizations don't care about what Kuiper says. Yeah, they don't care about that shit. It's not going to play out like we think it's going to play out at all. They care about what we fucking say. <laughs> yeah, you care about us. Yeah, my drop in, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hope the subscribers now, folks. We're up for overnight. Thanks to Just the Pip. Check out the playlist that brings you Just the Picture and Picture from AEW live shows. Yeah, how's Minnesota foul play by play on YouTube? Is it? Did, is it? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going really well. People yeah, seem to uh, find it helpful or at least useful. It's the yeah. most, it's definitely the most watched shit we do. <laughs> awesome. Hey. But uh yeah, obviously I'd like to see them stay where they are and get one that they already want. You know, there's talk about staying at 11 getting Phoenix there, which is con- Phoenix. And yeah. P- P- I, I, come on, just let me call him Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> balls. Uh, I had Jake in his head. That does not make that liking. Uh, Michael happy. Big Phoenix Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Did the guys? He's a. Stud. He really is. I, I love him. I like him a lot. But he's had multiple he's not a first surgeries rounder, on his legs, and he's, and not, a he's not a first rounder. I mean, uh, in this scenario where it's quarterback hungry, just starving for quarterbacks, he is. Why do I think he's the best quarterback? <laughs> Because you're an idiot. Because I, 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 well, I didn't watch a lot of college basketball, but I, I thought he threw the most beautiful ball of anybody there. Well, I mean, he lost to Jaden in the Heisman. He was second, and it really should have been closer than it was because taking that team to what they did that year should. 
Oh, okay. Well, if we're gonna, but if we're gonna, those number, those gaudy numbers, and and so, the, yeah, if we're gonna talk about the quarterbacks, and I really want Culver and Brad then to weigh in. Okay, if we're gonna talk about tiers then for quarterbacks, I assume you guys both have Caleb hey. Williams. He's in a place of his own tier of his own yeah his, his own tier worry about i disagree i disagree whoa, whoa. Brad, who else is in that our, tier? our Jayden ability daniels Jaden daniels should be number one. Oh, huh. yep. jesus that was going to be my next question if Jaden daniels like, my 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 opinion on it is that Jaden daniels is progressively getting better where like caleb williams he took kind of a step back this year i mean granted he lost you know jordan addison had a rough year, kind of a weak offensive line. Yeah. But you don't want to start regressing. Um, Jaden Daniels is hot right now. I mean, I think he should go number one. That's my humble opinion. So, yeah. Did, huh. I feel like all the quarterbacks are really going through the grinder right now. Everyone's picking them apart, yeah, picking them right. apart. It's crazy. And it's, and it's shifting, and they're trying to shift public opinion so that people are at each other's throats to, for who they want. I could I could agree with that assessment. Then where do the Rex the next fall in? Are they close? Like where's May? Where's Drake May in this? Is he close to Jaden Daniels? May is Caleb tier Williams? three. He's not even I've, tier two. Yeah. I've seen I've seen Drake May all over the place where he could be the best QB. Yep. He could be the worst QB. Like I mean, a lot of people say he's who gets you fired, really, yeah. because <laughs> to, to sell the farm to trade up to get that guy. There's a lot of red flags. Um, he's got uber, uber talent. Like you can just automatically tell in everything he does. But, you know, there's flags, red flags with all of them. But this class compared to others is so much better that, you know, people are going to take their shots and they're going to, someone's getting fired. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's not KOC. Yeah. yeah. But I trust what they're doing in the process they're taking. It seems like they have gone over and above what I've, I mean, we're so insulated in our Vikings news and we don't get to hear a lot of the other pundits for the other teams and what they're saying, but I've never heard of anybody doing all these private workouts with all these quarterbacks. You can throw a hundred balls going through like the old, the Gruden files, whatever they call it, like in the room, what would you do here? Why did you do this there? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. really, really deep, deep diving into all these guys, regardless of whether they think they're going to get them or not. Um, it's, it, I think they're just putting up a, a screen of we could do anything and we have the picks to do it. So, but you know, we've also put ourselves in that place to where we're the one that seems kind of desperate, right? Yeah. Oh, we are desperate. We're, we're, give we're really desperate pressures for this. And maybe and that's, is that what Arizona is exploiting right now? It's just yeah. like, you guys oh, need Tyler Murray. Yeah. Neither. Arizona's, <laughs> Arizona's unrealistic in my opinion. <laughs> oh. I think Arizona needs us more than we need them right now. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's okay. You want to make a fucking trade down. A, you're not going to trade down unless it's with the Vikings. You want to let the Broncos take the Broncos shit then. Like like we can offer way more than the Broncos can or the Raiders. So I think Arizona thinks they're in this prime <laughs> scenario, which I don't think they are. I I think there's something to be done with the Patriots. I think that's where we end up. Yeah, but I also did. Is there a chance we could go up to number two, even though it might cost us everything? Yeah, because I just read something that uh, the Commanders called the Bears, tried to trade up for one, and they made a serious offer, the number two, and then twenty-five and twenty-six first-round picks just to move up to the number one. Really? And the Bears said no, so maybe wow. they're not. Maybe they don't want Daniels. Like, yeah. I real possibility. <clears throat> Would you guys be open to two first rounders this year, 25, 26 first rounders for the number two pick in this year's NFL draft? For Gene no. Daniels, fuck yeah. I think I'd agree with my brother on that one. <laughs> and it, and they are that ballsy to do that. I think I think they could. I think it's in the cards. And if that's if the kid price keeps getting driven up like that, if they're if they're on the clock and they have six phones ringing at one time, you might just get caught with someone giving up everything. Well, if you're already like, 
if there's already a demand for two first round, two future first rounders and a first rounder this year for yeah. to move up to the three or four, then how much more are we paying? Just no, no, no. Team? I'm saying oh, so. So here's here's what we here's the standard offer that just to move up one slot. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a the, lot. The perfect scenario then, in my book, if we could somehow get number two and get Jaden Daniels, so we lost our two first round picks this year, two consecutive years first round picks. We get on the phone with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers and see if we could get the number five pick from them for Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson. <laughs> and, and draft what? Marvin Harrison or the kid from um, Washington. And then you're set. You're set financially for the next five years. Would, you can beef up the D. You can beef up the O-line. You can spend money in free agency. And you've got a young nucleus for five years to go win fun. yourself a Super Bowl. Say we'll have the cap space to do it in free agency. We've said that before. I, so, I actually, I, I don't mind that. I would probably take neighbors with five over the kid from Washington, but dude, yeah, neighbors is a good neighbors. Is, yeah. I mean, like, it's a I'm very, just saying. God, you'd have, I like how we're, and I can understand Culver's fucking anger about this. Like we're <laughs> taking the most beloved Viking since yeah. like Adrian Peterson and we're just discarding. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Adrian kind of swore out his welcome with the old switch thing. I think we oh, can go back to Randy. Anybody who has kids Viking. understands. He just understand. ran over a lady cop one time on accident. <laughs> no, I'm just. I don't think it's Jefferson. Um, like you were saying that the other the move you're talking about the other day with you know trade Jefferson to move up from eleven to what three, yep or whatever. I just don't know that he's got a lot of value. That guy a lot a lot a lot, a lot a lot a lot of that value, and you can't be throwing that around for. I just for don't. A maybe Have you, at the list of quarterback in the last ten years or so of teams that have traded up into the top five to draft a quarterback. It's not. Good. Doesn't, yeah. They oh, it's not good. The, they're all missing. Out. Yeah. They're all. It's a coin flip. It's a coin flip. I mean, it, it really is. And like, I, no, I it's not worse than misses. a coin flip because you've given up yeah. first round picks and Look at Josh Allen to get there. Josh Allen panned out, I think. So, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, if you just want to go the complete safest way, I mean, maybe you let, maybe McCarthy does fall. I mean, who was it a couple of years ago that was supposed to go high? And it was he fell. last year. Will Levis last year. Yeah, Will uh, Levis. No, there, it was a, it was a, he's a starter now, like a really good one. God, who the he is a really him? good one. I thought we should have drafted his ass. Uh, he would have been all right. I was kind of mad when we didn't. But, I mean, there's so many quarterbacks. I mean, like, now that we have capital, because I am a gambler, I want us to make a freaking move. Like, I think the moves give us something to talk about. It gives some excitement to the fan base. I think that's more or less what I'm going for. I would take any one of these, say, top five quarterbacks, six quarterbacks, and shoot, you even throw in Spencer Rattler. Like, I wouldn't even mind him. I'm not taking he's, half he's... of them, though, in the first round. Like, I don't want McCarthy in the first round. I, I, I just I don't. So you're... I thought you said the top five you'd be cool with. I'm cool with any one of them. Yeah, yeah, but he's not saying that the top five pick for all five. He's he'd be yeah. happy with any five of the top six quarterbacks, oh. or all six of them. He just doesn't think they all have first round. Yeah, like you don't waste a first round pick, and I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. Rattler reminds me a lot of Hall, and <laughs> I mean our last few later round picks. I he, he yeah he's the he only. Doesn't... Me very much. It could go down to, down to Penix for me, but <laughs> yeah, Penix. no. The only so, so want to draft him just so I can buy that jersey. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And he throws a great deep ball. Just, really, that would be is. Justin Jefferson's. Didn't Justin Jefferson say that he would prefer Penix at some point? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. It would make sense though, right? Like, yeah, he's Addison, just... Hawkinson, <laughs> Jefferson, the Suns. I mean, going downfield, get the would, best downfield passer in the game. Yeah. I would Here's think one I, for you. Here's a hypothetical for you. What if um, Mr. Harbaugh calls? Yeah. He's sitting there at the number five pick. And he and, doesn't want Justin Herbert. He wants. Yeah. yeah he wants our two <laughs> first rounders. And Justin Herbert our way, baby. We will take that all day. That is not what a new coach should do. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> 
<laughs> he wants he wants his guy that he won a natty with, man. No, so I've, shit. He's I've just, watched I've he's watched those videos on those things too, too. As a Vikings fan, do you, is that just creating another era of a Kirk Cousins thing? Or I would agree that the freaking Chargers quarterback is better than Kirk Cousins. Um, <laughs> Herbert's better. I would agree with that, but that frees up everything else we can do. Then, though, yeah, I mean, it, it destroys all we can do. Yeah. Now you got to have. I mean, to win in this league, you got to have a you know quarterback on a rookie deal so you can spend elsewhere. I think, and I think this is the best opportunity the Vikings have had in my lifetime, and to do that, really. Yep. Like ponder. Ponder. God. <laughs> See that? Then just just saying that reminds me of how how difficult this decision is. Like, it is. got it. It's you really, you really don't want to screw it up, but they're not. <laughs> you don't even know if you screw no, it up. No, but that's for a year and a half or so. <laughs> I yeah. understand. I understand trying to play for the future and fucking being safe about it. And being like, oh, let's just hang out at eleven because if we get at eleven. Maybe we take our QB there, or maybe we upgrade our defense a little bit. I mean, we've got holes on defense still. Um, and then pick somebody up. I mean, there's going to be somebody at 23. You guys got this. I'm going to mix a drink. Whether yeah. it's Panix or fucking Joe Nix or maybe even – I don't think McCarthy's going to fall that fall past the Broncos and Raiders or shit, even the Saints. Um, yeah. No, they'll go. They'll go. But if I mean, if you wanted to be – the best team this year you go edge linebacker first and you go you'll still that top quarter corner will be there at 23 probably if you wanted to be the best you can be this year you roll with darnold who's pretty cheap you can do that same thing but his next year's deal is going to be huge if it actually works out so that really doesn't help you in the long run so it's kind of in in stone that they're going quarterback it's just i guarantee i guarantee though even if like that's the route a Vikings fan wants to go, I know once it's draft night and after the Bears make their pick, everybody is just going to be sitting there in a Vikings jersey waiting for like a. Yeah. There's been a trade because you know, like we have to be the favorites to be trading up. And yeah. If you hear the oh go to yeah, and it ain't the Vikings, we're like what the because I don't know about you guys. I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna lie. I'm going to be kind of disappointed if we don't uh, if we don't get May or freaking Daniels. Like, oh. even if they're overhyped and we're wrong, it's just yeah. we're set up for a fucking a home run chance here, and I think they got to take it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you said, Jaden could be a superstar, and I think May is more of a project. But if it works, and in this Vikings, these up for a rookie quarterback too. Like they get set on such a shit team with such a shit yep. offense and no supporting cast that it kind of ruins them. Like baseball, they it takes them three, four years, some, sometimes six to even get to the bigs because they don't want to ruin the player's psyche. And then football, you just throw that out the window. So I mean. It's a much better situation, and I think any of them could flirt. I mean, it's what everybody says, obviously. It's the best situation. So May could be that guy. Jaden, obviously. What if we have the guy, though, right now? I know. Sam Darnold? He has never played with a coach like this. I mean, so, he, was, he, he was a high receiver, like this. wasn't he? Like, I mean, I'm just like, we could be sitting on him, like, right now, like, well, I th I think regardless, do you start Sam Darnold the first couple games if you draft I'm, a quarterback in the first he, round? He starts the first, I would say, bare minimum four games. Four games, unless unless probably, all hell breaks loose and he is just shit awful right away. Actually, that's what happens with Darnold. So he's, he got drafted in the Jets, obviously. And Todd Bowles drafted him, defensive head coach. Yeah. Yep. Chance. Adam Gase comes in, one of the biggest jokes around the league as far as a co head coach. That was his second coach. Goes to Carolina, another oh. shit organization. Had balled out for the first three games. He looked super good. And then organization caught up to him, however you want to look at it. So he's got real talent. When he had the chance last year, you could see it. I No, one, no one's going to be happy with sticking with him, though. No, no I agree he's with that. He's He's 25 years old. He's as old as Michael Penix, isn't he? 
Isn't it's Penix good. only 24? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Bo Nix is up there too, like yeah. 23, 24. So I mean, like, oh, it's just I want to see, I want to see the splash. But if there is no splash, like honestly, well, my, did anybody think we were gonna sign Sam Darnold? Like, I mean, we're looking at other things, like, and then you kind of sit back and you look at it, like, this yeah. guy's not a bad quarterback. He's played it's, on a lot of shitty really teams. Really bad like, luck. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so wait, they knew they were doing that. It was like the <laughs> second they could do it, he was on the team. They knew it. So they what have you, them going next. What can I understand? This is the off season, but like, what can the Vikings be doing right now with Sam Darnold? Because like, what kind of workouts and shit can you be doing with him? Well, he's got the playbooks. He's probably going over film with O'Connell. I mean, he's doing all that stuff. He's going to know the playbook inside and out. Um, getting him, you know, <laughs> familiar with the different formations, routes, whatnot, like. He should be somewhat familiar with the playbook because of similarities to the Rams, yeah? Well, he, he didn't play with the Rams. He didn't he? Who was he with last year? 49ers. Oh, the Niners. Well, is no, that's different. I mean, they run similar. They're all it's from the zone running scheme is what they have in common, I think, is all. KOC, Shanahan, and whatever. They all came from the same tree, if you will. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I... Hey. I I, I mean, as a Viking fan, like if <laughs> if Daniels fizzles out, I mean, what what if fucking Caleb Williams fizzles out for the Bears? I mean, their mm -hmm. their offense is pretty looking pretty freaking good right now. Their defense is already really good. I mean, I Adam, you don't know, like you do not freaking know. I, so yeah, I do know that that offense regardless of who their quarterback is, is not going to be good as KOC's offense. I agree. I 100% agree. <laughs> Just because of the schemer behind it? Yeah, it, there's a there's definitely a, a low yeah. ceiling regardless of what how good he is. But so. they'll have more people running open in that offense just because of the better talent that they've added. Yeah, they will. Well, their their talent's a, amazing. I mean, <laughs> it, it really is. Well, yeah. It's gonna to be tough division, to definitely. But like you said, everyone's gonna be disappointed if those top four for sure go and we're not one of the teams that takes them. That takes one. It'll be a loss, probably. Yeah, so I, I guess don't... that's my last thing. Like on McCarthy, I think he's a good one. I just don't think he's worth giving up two first round picks, though. I, that's my only problem. I don't think and he is either. The, that's the shitty thing is, is these teams sitting with these picks have all the leverage because they don't need a freaking quarterback. I mean, it's... You wouldn't trade up just the 11 and 23 to get McCarthy? No. I'd, I'd, like, I don't want to. I think that's... I would. I, it's basically just one first-rounder, so... And they got that. Unless you can grab Penix in the second. <laughs> 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 then, then we're going to be like, mother fuck! Well, <laughs> or no. one of the top four... Well, well, it doesn't matter. We, do, like, we don't Son have a, a pitch. yeah. We don't have a second or third round pick, so it's like our decision needs yeah. to be done. Yeah, we could trade right one long. of them down, though. I mean, that's not out of the realm of possibility either. Right, well, then, Rick Spielman. Right, Rick Spielman, and Oh God, I love Rick Spielman's drafts. Are so fun. Martin. That that was just great television. They they made for great television. Even on day two, it was like. <laughs> Let's collect those fifth and sixth rounders, baby. <laughs> well, dude, and that's the thing. You you never know what's gonna happen right now. I mean, they have those four quarterbacks slotted to go in the first four picks. That that's it. it that, that's what's gonna happen. Um, unless somebody, you know, number five moves up to four to get Harrison. But other than that, those four quarterbacks are, are gone. I think I just, it's fair. It's going to be weird, though, because you've got – who do you – Who's the you... best pass rusher in the draft? There's that – there, ain't there that D tackle from Alabama? There's an edge rusher from FSU. Uh, where are they I mean, protected to go, though? Yeah, Jared Verse is a stud. Top 15, him. I mean, it just depends on how shit goes. Um, the, yeah, edge rushers aren't – there's not a whole lot of them. There's one at the top. There's – you got that kid from Bama that Dallas Turner's a freak. Dallas Turner is has dropped because everyone's focused on the quarterbacks. He's going to yep. be a boss. He's uh, going to be awesome. What's going to happen is he's going to fall to one of these teams like 
who was it? The Eagles who got Jalen Carter last year. You know, it like it's just gonna be one of those this guy's gonna go to an elite defense, like he'll fall down somewhere because shit, we're going after all these guys right away, you know, when wide receiver class is pretty well stacked, quarterback class is stacked, couple offensive linemen. That guy could fall down to possibly like the twenties, you know, and my <laughs> actually, yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think of this take? Because the more you guys have been talking to me and the more I'm thinking about the teams on the clock after number three, you don't have any like QB hungry teams like the Vikings, Broncos, or Raiders, but you got some QB fucking maybes like the Giants, the fucking Jets. They're always in the market for another garbage quarterback. <laughs> um, the only thing with the Giants, though, to step in, they gave uh, – What's his? I can't even. I can't think of his fucking Daniel name. Jones. Yeah, Former Daniel Duke. Jones. They gave him that what four year contract, guaranteed forty million a year. So I mean, there's a way. They, they there's a way for them to get out of that last year. I mean, there's a way for them to get out of it next year. I read. Oh, yes. Um, they if they'd eat that forty million or something, but yeah, there's a way that they're definitely players. But for sure. but what I wanted to say to get or to see if you guys have the same take is. I'm willing to trade the farm if it's to get the number two or number three pick, depending what's taken with the two. Like if if it's just Daniels or Bust and the commanders end up with him, then maybe you don't trade up to three. But if you're fine with May or McCarthy, I'm willing to trade the farm to get one of those two picks. After those picks, though, yeah, I think you just let it play and see if see what happens. Yeah, because at some point you're diminishing returns there. So it's a, you want the stud. The reason you're going up is to get the stud, and you're not getting the stud. You're just doing it to do it at that point, and that's shooting yourself in the foot. So, because I mean, when when this shit all first came out, you know, the first projections after the college football season got done with, you know, we're starting to get into the NFL playoffs and whatnot. Like McCarthy was nowhere near up there. He was. Yeah mid first round early second round i mean Penix was looking second third round and now every single one of those guys has slid into the first round just which to me is crazy like it's we're I, obviously gonna overpay every quarterback we pick yeah it's just a matter of getting the one you want well and mccarthy was schemed around like he wasn't a quarterback that won them a championship he was the guy that they kind of avoided having the ball in his hands when it I, mattered. I wouldn't say I mean, avoided. He didn't have to do anything. Yeah, he's a game that's man. Not, that's not on him, though. Like the strength that It's I, not his fault, but it's a result of his talent, I think. He didn't have the receivers to really make that the main game plan. As I and, and look at competition in the Big Ten. The Big Ten's competition is not that great. Um, Michigan hey. had a hell of a freaking running game. I mean, so – you don't have to do, you know, if you're pay, playing in the Pac-12 or you're playing in the SEC, you don't have to have these prolific passers that go out and quarterbacks win the game. Their team won so many games. I mean, do I think McCarthy's a good quarterback? Hell yeah. Like, oh, that's back to what I said earlier. He, I, he, I do not think he's a top five draft pick, though. I mean, you're – Market dictates. It doesn't matter. Sure, I agree. I 100% <laughs> agree. <laughs> oh. That's capitalism yep. right there. <laughs> yeah. It was starting to sound like David Sampson's podcast up in here. I think I think with McCarthy, though, some of the things I read from I don't I've read so much shit. Like some of the guys are like, yeah, you can't blame him because he's on a good team and he didn't have to be like panics. Yeah. Um so those guys would just look at like his third. Anytime he got to a third down, what do his throws look like when he's actually got to make a fucking play? Mm -hmm. And like, so they're like, that's why he started moving up my draft ranks because when he actually does have to make a play, the kid's got a pretty good fucking arm. He's pretty accurate and he's making good decisions. He can, um, he throws and he's fucking open. young. He throws people open really, really well, mm. much better than May, I think, in just watching what I've watched. They'll put it in places to where. Yeah, I mean, obviously, 
Yeah, the receiver will have to change the trajectory of his route, and they're obviously on the same page enough to do it, even without having all that work. So I, I think that's super value valuable. It's good in the pocket. You can get out and scramble. They they all are. But O'Connell would value that a lot, I'd imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he would fit O'Connell's offense really good. Mays, Rock, well, McCarthy's, you know, got some of the X factor. I think May would have to sit for, I mean, you'd have to work with May for the first year. Yeah. But I mean, he's, I think he's the biggest wild card where he's, I do think that is the person that either makes somebody's as a coach makes your career or gets you fired. Because yeah, I, I, he's the one that most reminds me of Richardson last year and they were trying their asses off to get Richardson last year. So I could see. He really seems good. to be pretty damn good in the short, you know, the few games that he played, he looked terrific. He, well, he looked amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And he came in what week one, didn't he? Yeah, sure did. Yeah. So possible. I mean, yeah. I think I just number one, I want to I want a quarterback that can do his thing. Um, but then again, the greedy part of me is I want the Rolls Royce of a quarterback for once. You know, I I, I don't want the forever. You know, on, on stats on the last you know, two years <laughs> stats well, they're top 10 but <laughs> how you get balloons <laughs> my balloon michael did no, you that... send bradley balloons i did not <laughs> who sent me balloons i don't know it wasn't me <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me that's me in the corner it wasn't me. did you say a magic word or something and google meat figured it out i think you said magic, yeah. magic? <laughs> no magic? i magic I think Brad is right on that, though. Like, I got nothing against Teddy Two Gloves or anything, like, but it's. Yeah. Try to get the cream of the crop once instead of. From the get go, the guy that everybody knows is going to be. Which yeah. nobody knows, but. Nobody knows Dick. Oh. I it's, want the guy. I want the guy right sir. now. Five years when we extend him. We're going to be paying a quarterback seventy million dollars a year. Like yeah. that's the guy I want. I don't. Well, no, I don't think it's as much. I think Culver already said this. I think, I think we do trust the coaching staff a little bit in Quessy. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about it because I mean, like I keep having comparisons like to Josh Allen when the Bills moved up, and it's just like and. There's a lot of people like, I can't believe you spend that much to get fucking this guy out of Colorado. Well, Wyoming. Wyoming. Or Wyoming. Wyoming, same difference. I'm a shitty of... state from the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> you idiots. The state with the, the that's the state where your vote matters the most. It's but that's, worth the most. But that's what they did, though, because when they made that pick, and the reason why I said those is idiots is because the Bills have been bad for a really long time. Yeah. And it's hard to beat that stigma. And that's how you do it, is getting. One pick like that, right? No, and that's the I'm hoping uh O'Connell. Yes. O'Connell and Questy have their guy that is that kind of a pick where it's if it takes four first rounders, fine. Something <laughs> tells me they've got <laughs> something tells me they've got one guy they're targeting, right? Like they're not like, okay, well, if this happens, then we'll go with this guy. No, they want one singular person. Yeah. And if I that doesn't happen for them, then they're just fine going it with like Michael Penix in the second round or something yeah. like that. I think so the move that they've done so far leading lead it up to be that May is their guy. Do I think that's the best one? No, it doesn't matter. But I, for, to me, what they've done so far as far as hiring McCown, doing all these workouts, get it, getting the extra draft pick to trade up, like that, that all leads towards May, I think. So and yeah, and that's we're just we're the fans. They're the coaches. They look into more of the arm angles, the 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 quarterback, you know, pocket presence, all, all the bullshit that how they're moving their feet, arm angle. Like we're not looking at that. So these guys are probably like the same way. Like man, this is the, like what you said. They've got one freaking guy. Yeah. That's but I wanted to make another point too. Is the Vikings have rarely ever been shitty. We've been mediocre at times, and we've been great at times. Let's throw this out there. Are we really a quarterback away from being elite? No. 
I this, mean, we've had a quarterback. I hate hearing that, actually. That you know what teams I'm saying? Are like, quarterback away. It's bullshit. Like, nobody's just a quarterback away. Pending other moves, like we've been saying, yeah. all this salary cap space. Yes. In a way, technically, yes, a like quarterback away, because every team is a quarterback away. That's why they say it, because it's what it takes. When if I don't, I don't know. I understand exactly the premise of that statement, but like, what quarterback? Like Patrick Mahomes. No, I'm trying to say uh, like, they weren't a quarterback away though. They were winning with Alex Smith, man. Like it was were. a debacle that they they weren't winning championships though. That's the whole idea of quarterback away. Is you're a quarterback away from winning Lombardi. And none of these guys are Mahomes, but the point of it is the team rallies around the quarterback. That's the leader. Yes. Of not just the offense, the defense, the fans, the ownership, this fucking building. That yeah. it's all actually. So do that. we maybe do we whether maybe want to him or not, whether they think he's Peyton Manning, Tom Brady at the end of the game? I fuck you, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, whatever. You're gonna come back that last drive and win. Yeah, no, I think what Brad is trying to say though is mm-hmm. actually maybe if we draft a rookie quarterback though, it's not focused so much on. The fucking quarterback. It's focused on what that money can be fucking spent on. Then, like that's how I would look at it. Even if we draft a quarterback and he's not the best out of the class, we can put around the pieces and maybe get back to a Cunningham style offense that's, where that's, fucking. That's why I apologize to you, Tyler. Like I'm not opposed to getting rid of Justin Jefferson. I'm out. Thirty. <laughs> He said he was sorry. <laughs> Thirty million dollars for a wide receiver is just look what it did in Miami. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I Kansas that, City didn't need anybody catching a ball for him besides Travis Kelsey last well, they year. They didn't have anybody that could catch yeah. a fucking ball. Right. I mean, that's my thing. Is we yes, next year we're we're gonna have ungodly amounts of salary cap. The year after, we're gonna like we're gonna be sitting so good. Yeah. Why but my, not, why not this year? In defense of like, in, I, I, in defense of Culver, though, if you've got that money, you got to spend it on people. So that's my thing: is do you want to spend it on one of the premier position, maybe the premier position player or top three? Yeah. Or what are you spending that on? Right. That's what it, it, this is a passing league now. This is a passing offense. They want to pass the ball. The only thing I would spend that money on would be a pass mm-hmm. rusher. Because that's that's I think what wins well, you we games in the well, playoffs. No, we could have with Hunter. I mean but that's right? what it, well they were obviously happy to or yeah. just fine with to see him go at the rate that he was demanding because that's he's yeah. gonna be paid more than he's worth for over the term over the, the length of that deal, I imagine. And there's going to be more years where they're like, God damn it, we're paying this guy more than he's worth. I'd yeah. like to see more spent in the secondary. Flores has proved he doesn't need the super, oh, super yeah. to make that defense work. So Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would like the secondary to spend some money in the secondary. I think the front seven, he can do whatever he wants with the people that he gets in there that are athletic like he wants. I mean – I think he is just creaming his pants on the signings that we've had for the first seven picks. Like I, I or the our front seven for what we've done in free agency right now. Yeah, you can you can watch a guy walk away and not pay him twenty two million dollars a year. At what he's twenty nine, yeah. thirty years old now. I mean, that's a great move. It sucks to see him go. I was a fan of the guy, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, well, we have to. I want to win have- right freaking now, though. Like right now, I don't want to wait. <laughs> I, like I, I want to win right now. You don't so, say. Want it now? It's like Jesus Christ telling God. Like what Mike and I were talking about earlier. It's like God, if you could just let the Vikings win one fucking Super Bowl, <laughs> everything would be right in the world. <laughs> My own personal first round draft picks for the next twenty years, if we could just win a Super Bowl. Mine. I got. I got first round. We got first round picks too, right? We can throw some in. Come on. <laughs> Who are some of the uh, – are there any rookies or any uh, draft-eligible uh, secondary players that you like in the later rounds as depth for this team that lacked depth in the secondary last year? Damn dog. What, well, who are some late ones? That yeah, are, yeah. Like if we're going to fill out the secondary with depth, 
are there any is there anybody that you like that's that wouldn't be a me question i suppose brad you got anything you guys really been not paying attention to anything but quarterbacks huh Fair we've enough. got a fucking, we've got a hundred picks oh. from rounds four to seven. Oh. All I'm focused on is the, the ones in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> we got seven picks four through seven. Right, I give a shit about us. Nobody gives a shit about those picks. <laughs> Only Rick Spielman cares. Only Rick oh, no. Spielman cares about those picks. No, oh, no. <laughs> no, we don't want that shit no more. We want superstar. Uh -uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, you know, guys get hurt in this league a lot, right? Like, there's a lot of times where, you know, backups will play a lot of the season because fucker, knee, done, over, career over. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It, it's way, it's way better the day after the draft when we sign these undrafted guys. Yeah. That's we, well, we, that's surely we, since Brian Flores has been aboard, it's been he's been horrific at finding those undrafted free agents. UFAs, we sh they should just call us the the Minnesota UFAs. I bet if we changed our name, walk on you, we'd win a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. Walk on you. <laughs> like yeah, Adam Thielen. Ever it all started with Adam Thielen. Remember, he fucking did a tryout with the Vikings. He was yeah. he's from uh, uh, North Minnesota. Somewhere around the Ooh. lake, Detroit Lakes. He's from the Detroit, Detroit Lakes, Lakes area. Yeah. And uh, he went to a tryout. He went to what? Minnesota State? He, was he a Maverick? Yeah. He's shout out to the Division II basketball <laughs> championship, both <laughs> men's and women's, baby. The Mavericks. Yeah, baby. Hey, that's a thing. We got something. We got championships in the lower leagues. Also, PWHL Minnesota is still top of standings. Uh, we got one more. I think we got a couple more regular season games left. Um, but it looks like we'll be one of the top two or three uh, seeds in the playoffs. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. They're on a, a international break right now. If <laughs> the season's divided by two international breaks, where you know the hockey players have to play for Team USA and Team Canada, and whip each other's ass a little bit. Let's let's rate this real quick. What do you think on a scale of one to ten that you're going to be disappointed after the first night of the draft? Ten being your fucking just. I rate pissed. Yep, ready to walk outside. I'd say the nearest bridge. I'd go with like, a two. Yeah, there's no way I'm disappointed with the first round of the draft. I got, I've got a lot of faith in this uh, front office more I'd so say, than probably any other Minnesota front office in that's, history. Maybe yep, that's 100 percent true. If we I'm miss just, a quarterback, I'm just saying, why? Why do we give them so much fucking? What have they done? They haven't done shit yet. Why do we love these guys so much? We haven't won. They any traded fuck. fucking Stefan Diggs and managed to replace him with a better version of. And what have we done? We've made it to the playoffs <laughs> once since they took over. Like we haven't done anything. Cousins fall. Yeah. And we, we won. We won a playoff giants. game. We won no, a I'm just. Game. I'm saying I trust these guys too, but like they have not earned our trust. Like they haven't done anything. Brian Flores has earned my trust. It only took I, him one season to make yep. me. It took him like maybe four games to be like, God I, damn, this guy's I, good. You're right, I, Mike. You're right, Mike, though. But we do trust them in a quarterback selection. The rest, yeah, they made some some questionable calls and draft picks so far. Yes, yeah. have. They haven't drafted particularly well elsewhere, but oh, but I, I trust mean, the quarterback's room. I guess with with regards to Brad's thing, if ten is being disappointed. Or the chance to, I'd say I'm right at a five. Yeah. Even That's though I would, I'd say. I would trust any quarterback they picked at 11, I'm going to be disappointed if we don't move up in the top three. Like, I want these quarterback gurus to have their guy go up and get him and fucking – look. that's just what I want out of the draft. My like, rating is also, you know, it, it, it it's – it's impacted by the fact that I could I don't care about this team that much. I don't care about this sport that much. So how disappointed can I be about a team that I don't have any faith in, never have had any faith in, and will never have any faith in, you know? So should, disappointment is the expectation. So, I mean, if I have low expectations, then two. Two. <laughs> I you don't have any fucking expectations on any Minnesota teams. Well, no, that's uh, PWHL Minnesota. I expect to, to be I in the fucking, championship. <laughs> I hate the late seventies and eighties of this country from Texas bleeding up those rivers through the Midwest that created this bullshit fucking thing called fake wrestling that now has consumed Tony's it's fucking life. <laughs> like, it, I don't know how you take that so fucking seriously. It's the greatest entertainment 
available to us as human beings, in my opinion. So, it's fucking fantastic. Shout out right. to AEW Dynasty, April 21st on pay-per-view. I was randomly in a bar during WrestleMania, and people lost their fucking gourds, man. <laughs> yeah. Brad Dude, paid for it. I can't believe well, Brad paid for WrestleMania. There was it, it was a forty year thing, man. I this Roman Reigns and Brock bloodline with fucking uh, what's his uh, I can't think of his fucking name now. Um, I I work with a wrestler who trained at Cody Rhodes's Nightmare Factory. Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Like, yeah, I don't know. There's there's something intriguing about it. Like I've always said, it's. It's the best of both worlds. It's sport. It's drama. It's it's soap opera for men, and I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love so it. Is this, my question: I talked to a guy at work about this. Do these motherfuckers know what's going on before they get in the ring, or is yes, it like yeah. they know who's winning at least and the moves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they they go over you know uh, kind of the flow of the match, um, mm -hmm. and How you know have end. a plan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's things that alter the endings, though. I mean, there was just a match, uh, top flight from Minneapolis, won as a result of Ricky Starks being injured in the ring, uh, being concussed. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that stuff happens all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah, there have been someone that went rogue and just said, you know what, I'm not letting this guy pop off right here. Yeah, it <laughs> happens. It happens. Do a real pin and not let him move. Yeah. So, Anthony, what are your thoughts on the T Wolves losing last night? Uh, they only lost by nine, despite no Carl Anthony Towns, who is back. Uh, he'll be back in the lineup against the Hawks, I believe, is their next game. Uh, so he's going to be rolling into form for the first round of the playoffs. I thought that was really important that he get back to not just healthy, but playing at, you know, 100% level and 100% minutes before the playoffs started. It looks like that could happen. Um, Nas Reed filled in formidably, uh, didn't quite score enough in order to be a replacement for Carl Anthony Towns, despite his improved defense uh, on the floor. Um, they are a better team with Carl. I got to say, I, I might have to eat crow here. And, you know, we had an opportunity to see this team play without so, Carl and what it would look like without Carl Anthony Towns. And they were good, uh, but they were not great. They were not a, a, a contender. I mean, what was it? 14 and six or something? I mean, yeah, that's pretty it, good. It wasn't, it wasn't or, so out of the top three spots, where do you want them to fall? Oh, I want them to or, win the West. I, 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 I would like. I don't care about who they face. I just, I would like to have as many home games as possible because we have, I think, the best home court advantage in the sport. I mean that right. it's, uh, no, it jumps Denver, off the Denver screen. Does. It Denver is. Does. It's Denver. wild in that building. Well, yeah. that's the thing. It's like you avoid. Also, and then my other, my backup plan would be to be on the other side of the bracket of Denver, right? To make sure yep. you only see them in the final, the, uh -huh. the conference final. Um, so if they finish the one, then you would like to be the three, but I don't think that's going to happen because we own the tiebreaker against OKC. So I'm just, I'm, I'm scared of a. You got to beat them at some point, though. So I, actually, enough. Denver's not the team that scares me the most. It's okay. It's OKC that scares me the most. It's the teams that are going to play a small lineup that we can't defend with Rudy Gobert on the floor. The teams that can play Rudy Gobert off the floor are the ones that worry me. See, and um, that's a Golden weird... State worries me. Yep, uh, even why... though, even though they're not, they do they don't have the talent to beat this team. Uh, they but really don't. But they, we they... don't have the emotional strength. I think. We play dumb basketball all the time, yep. all the time. And it just takes one quarter of that stupid shit for you to lose an entire game that could turn the whole tide of the series. Um, and you lose a home game to Golden State, and they're going to fucking shove it down your throat at home. They will absolutely kill you. They Those two, you. that team and the Lakers <laughs> scare me in the first round. Like The Lakers don't really scare me as much uh, because they, they play a traditional big, and that that works with our – we're a better matchup against them. Um, but this pulling Draymond Green pulling goddamn Rudy at the top of the key and then making insane fucking passes that that's not going to bode well for us. Yeah, um, I agree with that. OKC turning us over 20 times in a game is not going to bode well for us uh, because that's what they'll do. Um, but I want to win the West as just a badge of honor, just to say, hey, 
we're, we're the best team in the fucking West. We played all these games and we were the best ones. <laughs> Holy shit! When does that happen? Let's see. Should we ask Google? Google, have the Wolves won the West? Nine, 2001. Wow. 2000. It's been that long. Back in the KG years, it's got to be. Yeah. My God. Uh, this is this would be the that would be the the biggest thing to happen in Minnesota basketball history since the fucking Lakers won a championship before leaving for LA. So wait, uh, just a quick sports question then. So then them winning the West or potentially the NBA Finals is that more impressive than like a wrestler winning a scripted match? <laughs> You are a fucking prick, Mike. I'm just asking you a it question. Depends. If, it, if it's a 60 minute championship pay per view match, a main event match, fuck no, yeah. fuck no. Uh, actually, I don't even think we're the third best team. Or uh, I don't. I think there's two teams in the East that have a better chance of winning the championship than us. So we're probably the fourth uh, behind Denver, um, Philly with Joel Embiid healthy is terrific uh stan van gundy said the same thing today uh so that those are the i mean boston's far and away the best team but in the playoffs we've seen them over and over again shit down their leg um i just don't i don't see that happening this year they're overwhelming in a lot of ways last question about the vikings how come andrew booth jr and lewis sign aren't good well even um like a Caleb Evans was really pretty good before Flores, and he didn't use them at all last year. I, they're just not scheme fits, I don't think. Mm. And you know, Booth was great when he was healthy or whatever, but uh, it's not. I just don't. They're not scheme fits, and scheme it's fits. different because they had that was supposed to be the fit. But um, I, the scene needs a lot more work. And and what and, is a what does a cornerback a scheme fitting quarterback look a cornerback look like for Brian Flores? Is it somebody who just can play bump and run coverage one on one for two and a half seconds? No, they got to be heads in the playbook all day long because they all of these guys play multiple different positions. From oh, awesome moves them around so much. Yeah, they got to know so much. They have to be students of the game. It's almost physical traits are secondary. Almost. Mm. So they might be the better athlete, but if they're not where they need to be, that's not going to do you any good. Right. <clears throat> Great analysis from Tyler Culver, our favorite <laughs> guest co-host coming in to save the day on the Vikings talk. That's what been really about. interesting, guys. I want I want to hear Mike's. Did you guys did you talk twins at all? Did you talk about oh god? <laughs> <laughs> do you have any comments? I said it's it's about as boring of a start to the season. But I loved the last game they played. I watched that game start to finish. It was a perfect yeah. baseball game. Yeah. There's a, there's a few highlights that have happened so far. Correa throwing Atani out at that's home. That's what he said. It's the best that's, relay throw he's I, ever seen. I, that's so far my favorite play of all of the baseball I've watched this year was. That was legit. The way it got caught up in the wall and yeah, fucking. I wish no. I could have seen it. I had it on the radio and it was terrible. Actually, off the guy made they a good throw, but the transfer in, he, he looked like a fucking pitcher. Like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll give Vasquez credit. Go, like it was just a perfect play. Yes, it really was. And to win the game, basically, in the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back, but you give up that run, you're losing. Even if it's just a tie game, you're going to lose it. Yeah. Yeah. The momentum mm -hmm. shifted at that point. DeChambeau's in the clubhouse at seven under right now, but uh, Hovland is charging he's through nine he's four under already masters okay. talk oh shit yeah i forgot <laughs> yeah. first day of the masters baby golf course opens tomorrow the no. worth Tony, i Tony, mowed the tees and the late. approaches huh what's how you're at uh they don't have them on the uh scoreboard that's not a good sign no. are you watching he's going for what 26 straight cuts made or something like crazy like that yeah, this is a re-air right now that you're watching. Just oh, I'm just up. oh, they just showed Woods. He's one under through one. Yeah, it, it was a late it, start though, Brad. Yeah, it would be dark right now in Georgia, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think Woods Woods got through fifty. Yeah, probably. 
<laughs> it's the eclipse, guys. It's fine. They don't play under the lights? What the hell? Yeah, he's tied for 17th. That's not bad. Through 13. It's pretty good. So do they just start around and they finish it tomorrow? Ooh. Yeah, they can, what a there was crazy a, game. a horrible, a, a bad like uh, storm came through this morning, so it knocked them back two and a half hours. We just had a bit of a storm here, too. You guys realize that the Frozen Four Championship's on right now? Yeah. Oh, no, it's the semifinal. I think like the best college seasons coming to Minnesota and the Gophers aren't even there. Never. I mean, <laughs> I got to change something, man. It's been almost a quarter century since they've won a fucking championship. That's sad, man. That's yeah. That shouldn't happen. Fucking yeah. Michigan. Really? We got to deal with fucking Michigan being better than us in this fucking sport, too? No. No, I say. This is hockey country. That's okay, right. wait. The state of fucking hockey. <laughs> Since we're kind of at a little lull here, but we got the football guys. Well, I thought we were. I thought we were at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, let's let's finish it out with this real quick. We're gonna go through until we get to the Vikings pick at eleven. I'm gonna point to one of you, Brad or Culver. So the first pick of the NFL draft, Tyler, the Chicago Culver Bears. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be hard to point at him. This fuck <laughs> This is dumb. Actually, Brad, you can do this. So this, this will be, oh, this, will be, this is going to be Brad and Culver's mock draft right here. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I like this. For uh, not just the Vikings, though. So the Chicago Bears are on the clock. First pick. What do they do? Well, Caleb. Okay, easy peasy. Brad, are you in agreement? Yes, he is. No, I'm not. Oh, what, what, are, they, what are the Bears doing? In a massive undertaking. There's no way the Vikings. The Washington Commanders move up. Wow. And draft Williams? No, I'm just kidding. It's Caleb Williams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two pick. Washington Commanders are on the clock. Caleb Williams off the board. Who do the Commanders take? It's, it's or a trade. Or a trade. <clears throat> I think they stick with Jaden. I 100% probably want to say, yeah, they have to. I mean, I. who knows? Washington, man. They, they they got shitty owners. They got, I mean, who fucking knows? I mean, they could, they could do a Bears type thing or a Lions type thing before when they were drafted. I mean, they could do something real dumb. Maybe they just want to swap. The eleventh for the second, you know, I maybe like, but yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would I would be say, awesome. I would think anybody, yeah. Jaden Daniels. I mean, okay, number three, the Patriots are on the clock. We've already uh, there's two quarterbacks out of the six. What's going on here? What are the Patriots doing? That dumpster fire of an organization. <laughs> I think we that happened fast. Hey there. I think that's where it happens. That'd be my call. Okay, Vikings have traded up. What does it cost the Minnesota Vikings? The 11th, the 23rd, 2024 first. That's it. That's what it's going to be. You think that'll get it done? Yep. Brad, Brad? do you think it's going to take that or more? That's interesting. If that's what it takes, then honestly. Go for it. And you're, I would, because uh, I'm I'm a May fan. Like if you can do that, yeah, I'm doing it all day. But if I could go and give up the 2026 first round too, I'd move up and get Jaden Daniels to two. Yep. Yeah, I would agree with that. My thing is the shit I've watched focusing on that trade, which that seems fair from what's been done. Two first and then next year's first to get up to three. What other team? Like no other team can offer more than that. Can they between the Broncos, the Raiders, or even the Giants? It's like, just us they... the, it's just us and the Bears with two first round picks, isn't it? If I'm correct. The only one, and then you know, you get it in this draft. You don't no one <clears throat> where you're gonna pick in next yep. year's draft where your first is gonna be. Right. I mean because they 
probably assume our next year first round pick might not be a great pick for them. So it might take more, but yeah, that's what I was wondering. I but like, I, that's enough. But then again, that team though still has that capital of having that first round pick. Plus, if they're still a shitty team, they've got two first rounders to do whatever the hell they want. You know, right. even if they're a mediocre team, and and New England has always made it out of not having superstars. I mean, they don't have Belichick anymore, obviously. But I well, think and they've got they've a got a new quarterback, new head coach. So I mean, what? what benefits them of having a top three quarterback with no offense to even okay. remotely speak of. Yeah. So they, you, so you're getting two first rounders from the bills or the Broncos or the Raiders. And then what you can get another first three years later, ours two this year, <laughs> next yep. year is still a better deal. It might take a third two or something, but we might get. No. So then phase. let's okay. Let's, let's move I, on now to pick number four. Well, okay, my last thing on that, I think the Patriots could get really creative if they took that trade with us and they steal next year's first-round pick as well, where then they could use those two picks they get this year if they yeah. actually wanted a position that they need that you could actually build, start a building block of a franchise like wow. Joe Alt, you could trade back up, like with Arizona with those two picks, yep. and you've, you've gained a first-round pick and you've got – the best fucking tackle we've seen in a while. Makes like, sense for both of those teams to do that. Or, or get the fucking best receiver off the board. Um, okay, so there was a ma there was a trade. We're agreeing that should be enough, even though there's a lot of people out in the internet worlds that think they need to give up more. <laughs> it's that's what, yeah. Just I don't think they're they might drive, they might huh? tack on like a next year's third or fourth round pick. I don't think it gets much more meatier than that for the third yeah. pick. Yep. Okay, so four. The Cardinals are on the clock. We've had three quarterbacks come off the board. And now the Cardinals have lost their best trade partner. The Broncos don't have to offer as much because the Vikings took their quarterback. Like, what do the Cardinals do here? Everyone, I mean, all I've heard is that they want Marvin and they want it and they're not trading. They're taking her. I mean, you, they've lost all their wide receivers. I mean, you have to if you're sticking with Kyler Murray. Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah. unless I mean, unless they call us and say, "Hey, for your twenty-third pick and a next year's seventh-round pick, we'll give you Kyler Murray <laughs> for the fourth. Like, you know, or some dumb like that. I mean, yeah, they got to take. Mark. We can all agree, Kyler Murray does not fit fit O'Connell's scheme, right? Uh, uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> Um, no, he does not. Herbert does. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. I mean, a lot of play action, a lot of throwing from the pocket. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so they definitely take Marvin Here. Harrison. I've watched a lot of things that a lot of people think neighbors is better than Harrison. Yeah, your skill, talent, and everything. Yep, but who's his dad? <laughs> I don't know. He was my neighbor for a while. I don't know. I can't remember his name, though. Okay, so Marvin Harrison's off the board. It looks like there's another team because there's 32 teams, so another team gets to pick. And it's the Los Angeles Chargers right now who have dumped all of their offensive playmakers. Oh, my God. Have their quarterback. The neighbors falls to them. That's just nightmarish, isn't it? Actually, they got. Regardless of who's there. Yeah. You think they so take neighbors? It if if the Vikings don't trade up to three, we're just giving them our two first round picks for the fifth this year to get JJ McCarthy, correct? Which I'd almost prefer, but that's just me. I, I'm saying like for that aspect, like I would trade our two for McCarthy, not next year, so I think that is too rich. Right. If yeah. we didn't trade next year's then I'd because then my thing is either you go all in, like I think we've all said Drake May is a huge risk, but it's it's one of those things where he's he's gonna be a huge fucking success or a huge bust. Mm -hmm. I think McCarthy, if we don't have to give up our first round pick next year and things don't work out for us, then at least we still have yeah a huge 
So I guess I guess going back real quick to our comments about how disappointed I will be disappointed if we give any more than our two picks that we acquired this year for number five. If we give up more, I'm pissed. Then like I, mm. I glad I'm glad we got a hopefully a franchise quarterback, but I don't want to give up the farm for McCarthy when Sorry. in all reality, realistically. He should be falling to us at eleven, right? Which yeah. I yeah. still think is a stretch drafting him at eleventh. I think he should be could happen, like a Teddy Bridgewater or something right. like that. Um, yeah, I would agree with that too. Well, yeah. hey, join us live from the Circus Sportsbook <laughs> on April twenty fifth, my birthday, for our live coverage of the NFL draft this year. It's going to be fun, move. folks. Let's see how pissed Brad actually gets. Let's see if we can get him to a 10. That would be fun. I, have, there I is, haven't seen him I can't believe it's two before, weeks away. No. Two weeks away. I know. Like, and it's not my birthday. <laughs> it's such a, I don't know why I'm so I, – I, the only thing I'm excited about is the draft. Uh, it's funny. I might have to watch it from outside the window on the big screen like I had to watch that Saints game back in the day. <laughs> 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 I can't be here for this. No, no one can see my reaction. <laughs> you know what? Let's go live. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we will see you live April 25th for the NFL draft coverage at Minnesota Foul Play by Play on YouTube. I'd like to thank Tyler Cover for joining us. I'd like to thank the brothers Haas for being here. And uh, it's nice to see your smiling faces. And uh, let's do it more often. Loons, <laughs> <laughs> give it a kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> the cat is back, baby. Okay, oh, I can't I wait to draft night, baby. Bye. Bye.